بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يحده الله فلا مضل له وما يضل فلا حادل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أحسن الكلام كلام الله وخير الحدى حدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن شر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار Today's lesson is on uh, the 28th chapter from this book from the book uh, Kitab al-Tawheed of Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab rahimahullah and this chapter is entitled Bab ma jaa fi at-tayyur Bab ma jaa fi at-tayyur chapter on what has been said concerning at-tayyur which is the belief in omens having belief in omens and Sheikh Sheikh Salih al fuzan he says that the saying of the Sheikh rahimullah uh, here with his chapter heading Bab ma jaa fi at-tayyur chapter on what has been said regarding omens belief in omens meaning what has what has been reported or related in the Quran or in the Sunnah regarding these omens of threats and of explanations that it is shirk right? meaning what has come in the, in the book and the Sunnah of threats and explanations that these omens are shirk and obviously the reason uh, the Sheikh says that uh, 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 the Sheikh says that this chapter has a connection to the chapters to what has come before it uh, in, in that this chapter also explains one of the forms of shirk, one of the types of shirk and one of the false types of beliefs that uh, damage a person's tawheed, compromise a person's tawheed and uh, in this chapter the Sheikh uh, or in this book uh, as we know that this book, in reality, the Sheikh is, 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 is by way of this book, he's explaining the reality of Tawheed and whatever contradicts it or makes it to be deficient from the beliefs and the statements and the actions which are false. So included then, therefore, amongst those beliefs, statements and actions, included in, in the sum totality of that, is this issue of At-Tatayyur, At-Tatayyur, which is omens. And then the Shaykh goes on to explain uh, the meaning of at tayyur and he says that in essence what, what it means is when you have uh, a, a, a pessimism and a suspicion about things and believing that it will that, 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 that this thing will bring some sort of calamity upon you some sort will afflict you with some sort of evil Right, so this, this is the meaning of an omen here. Uh, having this suspicion and pessimism about something and believing that it might bring some harm to you, uh, you know, that it, it, it will bring some type of harm to you. And then the Shaykh goes on to explain that linguistically, this word at is taken from at and at meaning here bird. And uh, this is because in the days of Jahiliyyah, uh, the Arabs used to... Uh, believe in an omen related to the birds in the sense or in, in relation to uh, its its direction of flight so when they saw for example that the bird which happened to fly over them uh, flew in a certain direction uh, then to them it would signify that this is that they would then become or have you know treat this as an omen meaning that they would become pessimistic and they would treat treat, treat this with suspicion and then whatever they had planned to do, for example, of setting out on a journey or, you know, if there was some sort, sort, sort of uh, matrimonial thing that was taking place or whatever, then they would, they would hold back from it. And then, so this is where it originally it began from. And then this actually became more general, right? So then initially it began with journeys and then they spread it out. Uh, sorry, initially it began with... Um, Sorry, with, with birds flying over and moving in a certain direction, but then they made it more general and then began to began to apply it to, for example, other people and 
animals and you know uh, 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 you know other, other things like that so they made it general and made it cover everything and as a result they then began to uh, treat everything and anything as you know potentially being an omen but however the, the, the base meaning and the original meaning of at is taken from at and this is because as we've said they used to look at the bird uh, now they used to you know the, 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 the way the bird used to move and its uh, direction of flight and the way it used to move its wings and its you know how it used to move in, in flight and so on and so forth they would treat that as as being an omen and you know other such related things so this then no doubt this was an aqidah or a creed that was based upon that, that was that was from the days of ignorance and it was also found the Sheikh explains that it was found in the previous nations as well and then the Sheikh goes on to illustrate with examples uh, from some of the uh, the prophets and their respective peoples to whom they were sent so he gives example first of all of the people of Fir'aun the people of Pharaoh and they treated Musa alayhi salam and whoever was with, was with him as an omen meaning as someone who would bring with him something evil upon them and so in other words they, 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 they were pessimistic and uh, suspicious, suspicious about Musa alayhi salam and those are the Muslims who were with him and they thought that these were that they brought an omen and uh, you know that, that resulted in harm coming upon them so from their statements uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says regarding them Allah says فَإِذَا جَاءَتْهُمُ الْحَسَنَةُ قَالُوا لَنَا هَذِهِ so Allah says that when some goodness comes to them they say that this is from us so in other words whenever there would be uh, you know some sort of uh, rain or the provision of sustenance or you know the, the land being fertile and producing the goods producing the harvest that whenever this would occur they would say qalu lana hadhihi qalu lana hadhihi that this is for us that, you know we deserve this that uh, this is our right you know we deserve this deserve this from allah because it's our right because of our actions we are the ones who deserve it so in other words it's not that they see it as a favor from allah the most high rather they see it as a right because of their actions this is this is how they see, see so in other words it's as if they are attributing this goodness as a result they are attributing it to their right for it because obviously of what they claim of their actions and that they acquired this because they are they are people of goodness and so on and so forth and then uh, and then similarly whenever there would be like goodness that would come to them for many many years you know meaning lots of goods and lots of harvest and lots of crops and lots of so on and so forth and you know, they would say all of this is because of our actions because of our attributes because we <coughs> earned such and such because we did such and such and such so in other words they would reject the favors of Allah you know the, the blessing and the ni'mah of, of Allah which is where these things come from they they make juhud of that juhud they, they, they reject that and then Allah says وَإِن تُصِبْهُمْ سَيِّئَةً that if they afflicts them evil and what is meant by evil here in this ayah, it means, for example, when, uh, like a drought basically, when the land becomes barren, there's no rain, the rain is withheld from them, and the wells become dry, and, you know, so on and so forth, the fruits don't, don't come, they wither away, the, or the fruits don't come. Then all of this, what they did was, they attributed this to Musa alayhi salam, and whoever was with him from the believers, and they would say that this, the reason why this has afflicted us is, is, is because of them. And so, in other words, the best of the people in their time, Musa alayhi salam and whoever was with them, they treated them as an omen. They treated them as an omen. And they ascribed to them the, you know, these types of occurrences of, of the droughts and the withholding of the rain and so on and so forth. So the Sheikh goes on to say that in reality, the, 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 the Musa alayhi salam and whoever is with him from the believers, they are the actual cause, they are the suburb of the goodness. They are, the, they are the suburb of the, the blessings that came because the messengers Ali, Ali, wasalam, they are the ones who come they rectify the earth by way of uh, good deeds you know, so, they, so they, they, they teach the people and the people uh, act upon good deeds and as a result of that the goodness comes upon them 
goodness comes upon them. So in essence, the, the, the prophets and the messengers are the sabab, they are the, way, they are the means through which goodness comes to the people. And as Allah says, establishing this, this principle, Allah says, وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَهْلَ الْقُرَىٰ آمَنُوا وَاتَّقَوْ لَفَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ بَرَكَاتٍ مِّنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَلَكِنْ كَذَّبُوا فَأَخَذْنَاهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ That if only the people of the city, the people of the townships, believed and had taqwa and feed Allah, then we would have opened up for them the blessings from the sky and the earth. But they rejected and they denied and so we took them, meaning we, 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 we exacted like vengeance from them on account of what they did. That we took them, we took them to task for what they used to earn, meaning with their hands, what they used to commit by way of their actions. So therefore, in reality, the believers, they are the sabab, they are the means of goodness, not the means of evil, as the people of Jahiliya used to think, but rather the means, the sabab of evil is actually uh, uh, the sinful people and the mushrikun and the kafara and the, 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 the pagans and, and the, 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 the kuffar so whatever afflicts the people of the earth of the various calamities and hardships then that is by way of the disobedient people and whatever afflicts the, believe, the, 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 the people of the earth by way of goodness then that is due to a favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so Allah is the one who bestows, bestows that favor but it's sabab it's the, 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 me, the ways and the means behind it was the people of righteousness, the people of taqwa, the people of rectitude. By way of the actions, then goodness comes upon the people. So Allah is the bestower, but it's bestowed, the, 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 the basis upon which, on which it's bestowed is the, the actions of the righteous people. So they are the sabab, but Allah is the, Allah, they are the means, but Allah is the giver. Allah is the one who bestows his favor. And that's why when uh, the Shaykh goes on to explain that when the earth becomes devoid of the righteous people in the, towards the latter times, in the, in, in the end times, then it's that time when the, the hour and the, 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 the Qiyamah, the, the day of resurrection will be established and the dunya, the world will, will perish. And as the Messenger Ali Salaam said, وَلَا تَقُومُ السَّاعَةُ وَفِي الْأَرْضِ مَنْ يَقُولُ Allah, Allah. The, the hour will not be established whilst there are people upon the earth who say Allah, Allah. And he also said, وَلَا تَكُومُ السَّاعَةُ إِلَّا عَلَى شِرَارِ الْخَلْقِ That the hour will not be established except upon the most evil of the creation. So therefore, when the earth becomes devoid of righteous people, then the hour will be established. But as for when the righteous people are always present, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, you know, he will continue to bring goodness and righteousness upon the people due to their presence. And this is in opposition to what is believed by the people of Fir'aun, you know, who, who treated the messengers as evil omens. You know, the, the messengers والسلام, as evil omens. So this was the people of Fir'aun. And likewise, the people of Thamud, they made Salih or they treated Salih as an omen that brought evil. And this was, this was when he called them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they said, uh, قالوا قالوا طيرنا بك وبمن معك قالوا طيرنا بك وبمن معك so they said uh, yes yeah, so they said that basically that we 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 you know that the, you are an, you are an evil omen that you are that we that we have been uh, that, that that evil has come to us by way of the omen that is in, that is that is you and whoever is with you, right? That, that you and whoever is with you uh, have be, are, are an evil omen to us. And this was said to uh, Thamud by by, by by to to Salih. And similarly, in another uh, a surah in Surah Yasin, where Allah speaks of the people of, of a particular township, uh, Allah mentions him in a surah, and He says how He sent to the messengers, and then. Uh, the Shaykh then brings a passage from Surah Yasin, وَاضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلًا أَصْحَابَ الْقَرْيَةِ إِذْ جَاءَهَا الْمُرْسَلُونَ uh, To the end of the passage, uh, the tra- I'll, I'll give the translation that set, set forth for them the example or the parable of the people of the township when they, when they came to the messengers and we sent to them two messengers and they rejected them both and then we strengthened them with a third one and then they all said that we are to you messengers who have been sent and they said that you are nothing but men just like us 
and Ar-Rahman hasn't sent anything down. He hasn't revealed anything. You are just merely liars. And then they said, Indeed, our Lord knows that we have been sent to you. And there is nothing upon us except to convey, except to clearly and manifestly convey to you. Right? This is all that our, our, our duty is. And then they said, and then these uh, the, 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 the people said, قَالُوا إِنَّا تَطَيَّرْنَا بِكُمْ Right, so that verily, we, you know, you, you have come to us as an evil omen. You have come to us as an evil omen. You haven't come to us with goodness. And then they said, لا إِلَّمْ تَنْتَهُ لَنَرْجُمَنَّكُمْ وَلِيَمَسَّنَّكُمْ مِنَّا عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ That if you do not stop, then we will stone you. That we will, you know, we we will we'll throw you out and stone you and outcast you, and there will be inflicted upon you from us a very tormenting punishment. So in other words, they threatened these messengers and they said that we haven't seen from you anything except evil. And, and then the messengers replied to them in response. They said, قَالُوا طَائِرُكُمْ مَعَكُمْ That, you know, these, whatever has, meaning that these, these omens are just with you. They are from you, they are with you. Meaning that whatever has afflicted you, then you are the cause or the reason for it. Right? Because of your the sins and the disobedience and that which emanated from them of disbelief, then you are the cause of that. Right? So this is what is meant. قَالُوا طَائِرُكُمْ مَأَكُمْ That your evil omens are from yourselves, are with yourselves. Meaning your own evil actions. They are the cause of this. And as for us, we are the cause of goodness. We are messengers from Allah you know, we, who, 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 who have come to you. And if you were to uh, obey us, then goodness you would you would have uh, achieved goodness so this then is a refutation from the messengers uh, and the, when the messenger said وَقَالُوا طَائِرُكُمْ مَأَكُمْ they re- refuted them and this itself uh, this this statement of these messengers proves and establishes that evil and this uh, you know the, 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 these omens that it's 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 it's, it's cause is actually disobedience and uh, kufr, disbelief, and shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, the mushrikun in the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the seal of the messengers and the best of the messengers, they likewise treated him as an omen, an even, or, or evil omen that brought evil to them, harm to them. As they said, Allah says regarding them, وَإِن تُصِبْهُمْ حَسَنَةٌ يَقُولُوا هَذِهِ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ وَإِن تُصِبْهُمْ سَيِّئَةٌ يَقُولُوا هَذِهِ مِنْ عِنْدِكَ uh, They're addressing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, the meaning of this ayah, that if some goodness comes to them, they say that this is from Allah. And if some evil afflicts them, they say, this is from you. Uh, and they're addressing, they are addressing the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So what does it mean? What does it mean that when some good you know, comes upon them? It means... When تصبهم حسنة, when some goodness afflicts them, uh, comes to them, it means, uh, for example, when they have uh, like a harvest, you know, the produce is 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 there, and the the, the soil brings the harvest, and the, the you know there are fruits, and there are vegetation, and all these other types of goodness that that, that, that came to them, they say, oh, this is from Allah, and of course this is correct, this is from Allah. Allah is the one who is the one who Allah is the one who sent it down, and then wa in tusibhum that when some evil afflicts them, what does it mean? This means when there is, for example, a drought, or the land becomes barren, the land becomes barren and it doesn't produce anything, it doesn't produce any sustenance or produce. They say yaqulu hadhi min indik, so they're addressing the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They say this is from you, that this is because of you. This is the the, the reason for this is you. And your followers. And then Allah commands the Messenger Ali to say, Qul kullum min indillah, that all of it is from Allah. Because all of it is from Allah's qada and his qadr, his ordainment and his pre decree. And all of this, like the fertility in the land and the goodness that comes from it, and the drought and the infertility of the land, all of, all of that is from Allah. Allah ordains it, Allah decrees it, Allah brings it into existence. And um, but the difference between the two is that the fertility and the produce and the good harvest and so on and so forth and all of the goodness 
that comes about by way of the right by way of the good deeds of the people and as for the uh, drought and the barrenness and the uh, rain being withheld then the cause of that is the disobedience and the sins so therefore the the reasons and the causes behind it is actually the sons of Adam but the one who decrees it that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so ultimately it's in the control of Allah but the way that is brought about is by way of the actions of the servants. Right? So Allah decrees it all, Allah determines it, Allah is one who brings it into existence. But what determines whether this happens or that happens, it's the actions of the servants. So the actions of the servants are a cause and a means, but the bestower and the giver and the controller and the, decree, and the one who decrees is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah is the creator, he's the one who brings it into existence and Allah gives to everyone in accordance with his own actions. The one who does good, Allah will do good to him. The one who is evil, Allah will bring evil uh, to him, if he so wills. But, Allah, but everything is in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So this is how we understand it. So therefore, the, the point being here, or the, 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 the point that's being made here is, the Shaykh says, that at-tatayyur, this believing in omens, and attributing to certain things that they are the, that they, brought about this evil and always having this like pessimism and suspicion uh, uh, towards things you know then this is uh, is a habit from the days of ignorance it's a habit of jahiliyyah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already mentioned it in the Quran as you've seen in these verses in these passages that the previous nations disbelieving nations from the people of Fir'aun and Thamud and uh, Ashab uh, the, the people of Yasin Ashab Yasin then that all of these people, uh, and, and, and generally the people of Jahiliyyah at the time of Muhammad Ali Salaam, that all of them, they used to, uh, this was from their habit, this is what they were upon. And the Shaykh says that unfortunately this, this habit is something that has never ceased amongst the people, and it will never cease up until the hour is established. And so, so then the Shaykh, Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab, in fact the first verse that he brought, he actually brought two verses, um, uh, the first verse which was in relation to um, the people of Fir'aun that we've already looked at ala innama ta'iruhum min indillah ala, in, ala innama ta'iruhum min indillah walakinna akhtharahum la ya'lamun that verily their, 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 their omen is actually from Allah uh, but verily most of them do not know meaning that the omen or whatever they, they, they believe in that and whatever you know, the outcome is according to their belief. All of that is, is, is with Allah. It's from the decree of Allah. And likewise, the, the saying of Allah, قَالُوا طَائِرُكُمْ مَأَكُمْ أَإِنْ ذُكِرْتُمْ بَلْ أَنْتُمْ قَوْمٌ مُسْرِفُونَ This is when the messengers, the three messengers said to those people in that township, that really your ta'ir, your, 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 your omens are just from yourselves. You know, will you not be reminded? Verily, you are a transgressing people. So Shaykh al Muhammad bin Abdul Hab brought these two verses, uh, establishing here that this was a, a, a habit and a way of the disbelieving uh, people to whom the messengers were sent. Then, uh, Shaykh Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Hab, he brings a hadith uh, reported by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, who said, uh, which is narrated by both uh, Al Bukhari and Al Muslim, and he said, لا عدوى ولا طيرة ولا حامة ولا سفر and this translates, or the meaning of this is that there is no contagious disease, that there is no contagion, and there is no, you know, that there is no contagious contagious disease without Allah's permission, and that there is no omen, atira, and there is wala hama, wala safar. We'll explain what each of these, each of these four words actually mean. Um, so, so the saying of the Messenger, Ali Salatu Salam. When he said, "La uh, adwa," what it mean, what it means here, "La adwa," what it means here, is contagion, a contagious disease, meaning that when a disease or an illness goes from one person to another person, right, or from one animal to another animal, or from one location to another location. So the Sheikh says that the that, that, that the illness. You know, it, it, it kind of uh, moves from one place to another and it goes from one ill person 
to a sound person and it goes for, you know from one you know person who is again diseased to you know from one um, you know diseased uh, animal or something to another one that, that is sound then all of this is something that is actually found right this this happens we can see it outwardly that this actually takes place and what actually what actually happens but when the messenger says la adwa that there is no contagious disease the messenger is not negating or denying this right because we can see this outwardly that a disease breaks out and the people get it it moves from place to place from location to location you know it affects the project it affects the the animals and it spreads we know that this is the case but when the messenger says that there is no contagious disease what is what, what the messenger is negating here is that which the people of Jahiliyyah used to believe which is that they used to believe that this disease would by itself in and of itself of its own accord without Allah's decree move and spread in this manner right this is what they used to believe they used to believe that the disease in and of itself with its own ability or whatever without Allah's decree that this is how it would spread this is how they used to believe believe it so in accordance with that this is incorrect the messenger, the messenger is negating this that there is no adwa according to how the people of Jahiliya used to used to used to believe it and al adwa as the sheikh says it is when the disease moves from one place to another place uh, as a result of for example where the reason why this happens is because a sound and healthy person is near to an ill person and so the disease spreads and the one who decrees it the one who decrees for it to happen is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah this is from Allah's decree because sometimes you will find that a healthy person is next to a, a diseased person but nothing actually happens to him now we see that this happens as well and uh, you know he bec- and sometimes he might become near and he is afflicted he, he then does become affected by the disease as well but the reason what's the reason behind it this reason or the suburb it always goes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if Allah wills then the disease will move if Allah doesn't will then it won't it won't, it won't, won't move to, to another person so in other words just because two people are together a sick person and a healthy person a person with a disease and a person without the disease or for example just because a person goes to a place in which there is a plague or a disease this is just a ways and a means by which the disease spreads it's a suburb but as for the actual effect taking place right the actual effect taking place this is in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right so for example it's it's true that if a person goes to a place in which there's a plague or a disease or whatever or he stands next to someone or is close to someone or spends you know uh, time with someone this is a ways and a means and a, a, and a potential cause this is correct and true however for the actual effect to take place this is in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then Sheikh explains that sometimes a person might you know enter into a, a land in which, the, which there is a plague and nothing, nothing happens to him and sometimes a diseased person might uh, you know uh, be be in close proximity or near, near to uh, a, a healthy person and nothing happens to him sometimes an ill or a diseased person might sleep next to a healthy person if nothing happens to this healthy person and sometimes something might happen to this healthy person so what is the difference between the two situations you know how come in one situation it occurs and the situation doesn't occur how can this happen the, the difference between the the, the the difference is is that all of this goes back to Allah's will if Allah wills it to happen it will happen if Allah doesn't will it to happen it won't happen so now this is the difference between what is believed by the people of Jahiliya with respect to the idea of contagious disease that they believed and that which has been correctly explained here in that yes it's true that disease can spread and that being in a land where there is a plague or being close to someone who has a disease that yes that is that is a suburb that is a ways and means by which disease can spread but it all comes back down to Allah's will 
the effect is it comes back down to Allah's will. If Allah wills it, it will happen. If Allah doesn't will, it will 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 not happen. This is what is meant. So, the, but as for these people, people of Jahiliyyah and the adwa that they used to believe in, they said that everyone who comes cro- close to a diseased person or who comes near to him, that he will be afflicted, and they wouldn't ascribe this to al qada wal qadar, and then they wouldn't actually rely upon Allah Subhanahu wa Taala either. You know, and they would they would they would go into excesses, believing in these omens, and you know, they, they, with, with this pessimism and the, the, these omens, and uh, you know, believing in 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 in, in this uh, contagious disease being spread, and uh, they would they would they would they would do actions which would actually make you laugh. The actions that they would do as a result of this uh, belief. So, in other words, the Sheikh then goes on to say that the saying of the Messenger. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam La Adwa Meaning that there is no contagious disease In accordance with what the people of Jahiliyyah used to believe In accordance with their belief But as for the contagious disease Which obviously occurs by way of Allah's permission Then of course this is something that, we, that, that, that happens This is something that we can see and it happens And we can see that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam In the Sunnah He actually prohibited from mixing with a person Who's you know who 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 has been afflicted with uh, leprosy, and he prohibited from uh, going to a a, a a land in which there a plague has broken out. He prohibited a person from travelling there, and he prohibited a person who was in the land in which there was a plague or a disease that he should leave that land, and he prohibited the one who was outside of that land to enter into it, because why? These are the asbab, these are the ways and means by which the disease is actually spread and uh, you know and 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 and, uh, and to you know and, and and so so basically the way to prevent it the way to prevent this spread is to you know um, is to is to take hold of these ways and means that that prevent the spread of this of this disease and the Sheikh says that to actually go to these places is in reality just throwing your hands to your own destruction. It's just throwing yourself to, to destruction. Because Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited this. Allah has prohibited from this. And the Sheikh then says, unless of course there's someone whose iman is, a, is very very strong and he relies upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this person maybe, you know, he, he might be able to... Uh, go to a land in which there is a plague or a disease, outbreak of disease and he might mix with the, the diseased person and he won't be affected because this person is relying upon Allah he has to walk upon Allah and but the shaykh says but this type of thing is only for the people with strong iman very strong iman but as for the person as for the person who has weak iman then then the likes of these people should keep away from these places in case that they become afflicted right so they so they so they go out thinking they've got strong iman when they haven't and then they end up being afflicted with the disease and then their aqidah will be affected as a, as a result of this you know the aqidah will become corrupt so therefore the sheikh says that to move to a land or to go to a land in which there is a uh, danger then 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 the sheikh says this in reality is just throwing oneself to destruction as and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَلَا تُلْقُوا بِأَيْدِيكُمْ إِلَى التَّحْلُكَ do not, do not throw yourself into, don't destroy yourselves by way of the actions of your hands. You know, don't, don't throw yourselves to, 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 to destruction. And the Shaykh says, obviously this is unless there is some kind of benefit to be attained, like some overwhel- overwhelming or prepondering benefit that is to be gained when going to, when, when going to the likes of these places. Um, the Sheikh says, as for when there isn't any benefit, then you know to take hold of those ways and means which are preventative and which save you from, from that harm, then that obviously is better. And when there is some sort of benefit, then to go is, is, is better. And this is in accordance with the two situations. So this is this is so this is, this is the correct meaning then of the statement of the Messenger Ali Sallam, La Adwa. La Adwa. This is what is meant. When he says there is no contagious disease. This doesn't mean that disease does not spread. What it, what it means is there's no disease, contagious disease, in accordance to how the people of Jahiliyyah used to believe. 
But as for according to the correct belief, when we when when we see that, you know, that sitting next to a diseased person or going to land in which there is a plague, whatever, that these are ways and means that obviously result in the spread of disease. This is correct and true, but we believe that the effect, or that the effect and natural occurrence is down to Allah's will. So yes, of course there is contagious disease, of course it does, it does spread, but all of that is in accordance with Allah's permission. And we know this because often uh, one person can stand next to a diseased person, he'll fall ill. Another person can stand next to a diseased person, he won't fall ill. All of this is down to Allah's will. So yes, there is contagious disease and it's, 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 it's due to Allah's, Allah's will. But as for the contagious disease, in accordance with how the people of Jahli used to believe in, that this disease in and of itself moves and transfers and you know, moves from animal to animal, person to person, whatever, and so therefore it's inevitable, then there is no contagious disease in accordance, to, in, in accordance with that particular uh, belief. So inshallah, this is the end of the first. This is la adwa. And then the second thing that was mentioned is in the hadith, wala tiyara. And the meaning of this, then of course this means that there is no, uh, again, the, 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 the bad omen coming from birds. Then this means, in other words, this is just a prohibition. This is a, a, a forbidden. So do not believe in omens. Do not believe in evil omens. And so it means that when a person, when he finds in his in him, in his soul, something that meaning he feels something, or he's pessimistic about something, or he's suspicious or pessimistic about something, then don't, don't let him hold himself back, just because of what he finds, you know, in in his heart. Don't let him uh, hold back from progressing and moving forward and being resolute in doing what he's doing, just because of some pessimism he holds, or some suspicion or doubt or pessimism that he holds in his heart, because. He shouldn't do this. Uh, uh, and this, uh, the, the, So the Shaykh is saying that this is how a believer is in the sense that his Iman should drive him forward. A, a, a person's Iman is what should drive him forward. And this is different to a person who has weak Iman because what will happen to a person who has weak Iman is that he, this pessimism in his heart and it will overcome him and then he will turn back from what he was supposed to do or what he intended to do. So therefore, uh, this uh, occurs from this person due to a deficiency in his aqidah and due to a deficiency in the tawakkul, in a, a tawakkul upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the Shaykh says that when you find in your soul something of like uh, this pessimism or dislike, you know, because you might fear that there's a, a, a bad outcome in relation to something or whatever, then place tawakkul upon Allah, rely upon Allah and just proceed, go ahead with it, but rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this tiyara or this omen, this omens in general, it doesn't have any basis. There's no basis for it at all. As opposed to al-adwa. Right? Because the contagious disease, as we said, that does have a basis because we know that adwa, it can spread, but it spreads due to Allah's permission and due to Allah's will and due to Allah decreeing it. But as for this tiyara, that, that is baseless. This is just merely from the action of the shaitan. It's just an imagination, just thoughts and ideas that shaitan puts into a person. Right? It comes into a person by way of these whisperings of the shaitan. It, so it doesn't really have any basis. And uh, so therefore, at tayyur this belief in omens and you know negative outcomes and things like that, this doesn't have any basis and whoever finds in his soul anything of like this pessimism and disliking something and so on and so forth, then he should rely upon Allah, make his trust upon Allah and be resolute and be firm and let him not this tiara you know, uh, prevent him from pursuing his his goal, uh, whatever it is, from from actually pursuing his actual uh, goal. And then the next thing that was mentioned is wala uh, hama, wala hama, and what is meant by hama hama is actually is it's like a type of owl, like a night owl, and the Arabs they used to again treat this as an omen. So, for example, when it when when a, when, a, when when an owl would land or rest upon one of the houses, then you know uh, you know they would uh, 
they, they would basically make a remark or they would say that basically my, my soul has, has um, it was like an expression that they would, that they would make that would express express some sort of uh, uh, you know some sort of difficulty or some kind of fear that would come to them in their souls, and they would then treat this as an omen, and they would say that an owl doesn't come and rest except upon something that is, you know, that is already uh, it's like uh, you know like it, it, that, that has some kind of ruin or destruction uh, uh, upon it. And this really is from the aqidah of, of, of Jahiliyyah. This is a belief from the days of ignorance. And even some of the people of Jahiliyyah used to believe that when a person would be killed, that when a person, would, when a fighter was killed, uh, and vengeance wasn't made for him, right, revenge wasn't taken for him, then what would happen is that a bird would come from him, would exit from him, which would be which would be called Hama, which is an owl, and it would start speaking and it would start saying, it would mention some words, uh, you know, skuni, skuni, meaning that um, seek vengeance for me, seek vengeance for me, and then the sheikh then brings some poetry, uh, which which you you know the, the poets used to write in the days of Jahiliya, with with the meaning, um, with the meaning to the effect that, you know. Uh, well, the general it, the, the meaning that's found is uh, the general meaning is of a person saying that if you don't look after don't look after my um, <coughs> you know uh, if you basically if that, that I will strike you up until the uh, the the owl says, you know, seek vengeance for me, seek vengeance for me. It's just a poetry to explain that they used to use it in 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 those days with with that particular meaning. So this is hama, wala hama. So there's no such thing as this omen related to the the owl. And then finally, the messenger said, wala suffer. And regarding this, there are two state, there are two uh, opinions. The first opinion is that when it said wala suffer, that it's in relation to the month of as uh, suffer. The month of Safar. And so in other words, it means that uh, in the days of Jahli, they used to treat this month as an omen. And so for example, they wouldn't get married in this month, they wouldn't travel in this month, they wouldn't trade in this month, set out on trade in this month, <coughs> or trade in this month. And they used to believe that it was a month that, would, that brings evil. You know, they, they treated it as, 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 as uh, an omen. So the messenger... Or the Prophet Ali Sallam he refuted them and he said that you know what he said what I suffer that there is no such thing as uh, 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 this uh, month where there are you know where where there are omens rather suffer is is a month from the months of Allah and it doesn't have any uh, you know omen or anything like this attached to it, evil attached to it so according to this uh, opinion this then is a, a, a nullification of the belief in omens regarding the month of Safar that is with these people. And the second uh, saying, the second saying, the second belief is that a Safar meaning here that it's, it's a type of disease of the stomach and they used to, those people used to believe that it, it, it moves from one person to another, like in a, uh, you know, like, like in a contagious way. And the Sheikh says, in reality, whether, whether, whether it, it means this or it means that, whichever of the two opinions, both of them are negated, um, irrespective of whether these people treated this month as, as, as w- with pessimism and as an omen, or whether the, this disease they treated it with pessimism as an omen. All of it has no basis. All of it has no basis. There is no omen in relation to the month, not in relation to this disease. But rather, the diseases and all of the outcomes, all of them are with, in, in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is the one who causes them to uh, descend. Allah is the one who causes them to be removed or to be raised. He's the one who causes people to become ill, and he's the one who causes people to become healed. So, and in any of this, neither the months of the year, nor any other thing from the things that we've already mentioned, have any role to play in any of that. Right? It's, it's all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, this is uh, the end of the explanation of the hadith. Uh, the Shaykh said, Akhrajahu, Shaykh Muslim Muhammad bin Abdul Akhrajahu, meaning that this hadith was related by uh, uh, Bukhari, and Muslim. 
So we'll stop the lesson there. We still have some uh, some more left, inshallah, but we'll finish that in the next lesson. Uh, so we'll stop the lesson there. So, so this chapter then is on the chapter related to omens and how there are no such thing as omens or evil omens and and that this obviously is an important chapter because it relates to uh, uh, the subject of Tawheed and Shirk and there are some important issues that have been clarified here and inshallah we'll finish this lesson in the uh, we'll finish this chapter in the next lesson inshallah ta'ala Zakla Haraq Assalamu Alaikum Assalamu Alaikum